Our bodies are made of trillions of cells. These cells make up our skin, our hair, the organs in our body, and all the sinewy connective tissue in between. Bodies are complex, like the activity of a major city or the diversity of a rainforest ecosystem. A closer look inside reveals a colorful variety of cells interacting with each other and performing complex and specialized functions in order to keep the body running smoothly. Being able to characterize unique, individual cells is important for understanding how our bodies function in health and what can go awry in disease. Since our trillions of cells once originated from a single cell, learning about cell diversity can also uncover insights into how the body is built. While nearly every cell in the body contains identical genetic instructions packaged in DNA, called the genome, there is flexibility on how that genetic information is expressed and in turn translated through RNA to create proteins, the building blocks of life. As a metaphor, you could think of the genes and the genome as the, the keys on a keyboard of a piano, let's say. And then what the transcriptome would be, would be the music that's being played by the genome, where the a given cell type is going to activate some subset of those genes in the genome. The genome has all the information to make things like a cardiac muscle cell or a neuron. But those cells using the same genome are very different. In the past decade, one technology in particular has allowed researchers to shine a light on how single cells, even cells belonging to the same tissue, vary from one another. This technology is called single cell RNA sequencing, and it allows scientists to capture unique gene expression information in dozens, hundreds, or even hundreds of thousands of cells. Researchers at Whitehead Institute use single cell RNA sequencing to answer questions and guide future research, including Whitehead Institute member Mary Gehring, who studies gene imprinting, how certain genes can be expressed differently depending on whether they're inherited from the mother or the father. Gehring sequences the RNA produced by individual nuclei. RNA-seq is, is like a pointillist painting where the image is made up of many small dots, which um, from a distance look like one homogeneous image. In this case, the, the single cells would be those dots in the painting. We're interested in seed development and reproduction in plants. We're working um, in Arabidopsis thaliana, which is a, a small weed that has been adopted for use by um, plant biologists as a model organism. And it's a really great model system because it's easy to grow, um, it has a small genome, and you can do um, genetics very easily with this organism. We became interested in single cell approaches because from some of our um, bulk data where we were taking, uh, we were looking at gene expression profiles in a whole tissue, um, we had some evidence that there might be heterogeneity. The endosperm is a tissue that provides nutrients to the seed, like the placenta in mammals. It transfers nutrients from the mother plant to the seed. While this tissue is not made up of individual cells, it contains many separate nuclei. There's these individual nuclei, each of which has some cytoplasm around it. Um, and it's actually really cool that these nuclei have different identities, even though um, you might think because there are no cell walls or cell membranes that it would all be one homogeneous bag, but that's really not the case. We became very interested in trying to develop approaches to profile single cells at the molecular level um, with respect to which genes are active in these single cells. The Radine lab studies planarians, water-dwelling flatworms known for their ability to regenerate missing body parts. They have these sort of cartoon-like crossed eyes and they can regenerate any missing part of their body. You cut off their heads, they regrow new heads. You cut off their tails, they regrow new tails. They've been studied for over a century. And we use them in my lab to try to understand the principles about regeneration. The idea that you could do single cell sequencing, um, you know, it's quite fantastical uh, to me um, at the time. Uh, Omri Wurzel, a postdoc in the lab, successfully implemented uh, single cell sequencing, sequencing over 600 planarian cells uh, for the first time. It was still quite expensive and labor intensive per cell. And I began to wonder whether it would be possible, maybe, um, to not just sequence uh, a number of cells, 
but may be possible to determine the transcriptome of every cell of a complete animal. A real explosion of opportunity happened in the past five years when parallelized sequencing became available. In particular, a method named DropSeq allowed researchers to process more cells in less time. Instead of physically separating cells one by one, cells are combined with special microscopic beads. Both cells and beads are sent through a machine that pumps short, timed bursts of a fluid into an oil, creating individual droplets, some of which capture one cell and one bead. Every bead has its own unique barcode, so it can be distinguished from the other beads. Synthetic molecules that coat the surface of each bead capture RNA from the accompanying cell. Once researchers prepare this genetic material, it is read through a sequencing machine, then transferred to a computer for analysis. This changed the picture. Um, and it took this idea of maybe getting the transcriptome of every cell type of an animal from the realm of wishful thinking to maybe possible. We set out to try to do this. We uh, implemented uh, DropSeq in the lab and started systematically sequencing the transcriptomes of single planarian cells from the adult state. Um, in the end, we sequenced over 60,000 cells to get the first atlas. So this was a huge expansion in the, the number of cells that we were doing. Um, but as time has gone on from 2018, uh, it's, it's getting ever easier to sequence more and more cells. So sequencing tens of thousands of cells is almost becoming routine. Um, in this short period of time. So it's gone from something to me that felt like, you know, landing on the moon to something where it's not so hard anymore to sequence thousands and thousands of cells. Single cell sequencing is not only an indispensable resource in planarians, but also for a number of model organisms. Researchers in Whitehead Institute director Ruth Lehman's lab sequenced gene expression in a fruit fly ovary as part of a larger international effort to sequence the entire fruit fly body. So often the fly is the model organism for trying something out. And, and in this case, it was, uh, it was kind of fun because all these different um, investigators from the East Coast and the West Coast, from all over the US, um, were dissecting their favorite organ and then the analysis was done. And so And then there was a lot of discussion because we had to all agree on the names of cells um, so there's some really kind of basic aspects which came out. Initially, we actually started with not looking at the adult ovary, but we looked at the larval ovary. And this is the ovary which is developing. And the idea was to find cell types and follow the cell types as the organ develops. Sequencing data is often represented using a two-dimensional graph called a cell atlas. Atlases show how individual cells are related to each other and what unique gene expression signature sets them apart. If you take the atlas of the world, you have all the countries and they have um, relationships which, with each other on the map. And this is the same with when we, when we think of an organism now, flies is one of these very established model organisms. People have studied them for a very long time. And so if you want to now study another model organism, uh, the problem is that you don't have a uh, hundred years of experimental history there. But sequencing cells, it doesn't matter, right? Because there's no, no prior knowledge needed. And you can probably jump a century that way. Researchers are continuing to pioneer new uses for single cell sequencing. In Whitehead Institute member Jonathan Weissman's lab, researchers developed a new technique named PerturbSeq to explore the roles of different genes. The method involves sequencing RNA from cells that had select genes systematically silenced using CRISPR-Cas9. In June 2022, the Weizmann Lab presented the first ever comprehensive map tying every human gene to its function. I think that um, this era of uh, the emergence of single cell sequencing has has definitely been a transformative era. So it's, it's just been an explosion of uh, activity around this, the use of this method. And, and we're just still, I think, in the early phases of beginning to apply uh, this method to different problems and realize its potential.